Hi, this is John. This video is on using hot wire techniques to make a foam transition. I need a foam transition for this rocket to adapt from seven and a half inch diameter down to about three inches in diameter. This is such a large volume that 3D printing or other additive techniques are too expensive. And going back to trusty old foam makes a great option. This foam block looks pretty daunting. We'll need to cut it up into smaller pieces to use it. And we'll cut it using a hot wire. This is the best way to get nice clean cuts. You'll be seeing me use a commercial system, but Google for hot wire foam cutter and find lots of options for making your own. The basic tool is a bow. This is just a mechanism that stretches the hot wire tightly between two points. It's important to keep it tight so that you get straight cuts. And what makes the wire heat up is a thermal generator. You apply this to both ends of the wire on either side of the foam to be cut and the wire in between heats up. Longer stretches of wire generally need higher voltage. The key to getting smooth cuts is slow, steady movement. In general, you want to avoid freehanding as much as possible, so make jigs wherever you can. To start cutting this block, we want to slide it along a smooth surface. The bow hangs below, making sure that the wire is taut between the two side pieces. These side supports keep the wire the proper distance from the bottom, which will allow us to cut off the right amount of material. We'll be pulling the block forward towards us, and we want to make sure that we don't pull the wire off the end of the block. And finally, here's the hot wire, which does the actual cutting. When we're ready to start, we connect a thermal generator to both ends of the wire and set the voltage appropriately for the length in between. To cut, just slide the block slowly and smoothly through the wire. Go slowly and be careful. If you feel any drag or any resistance, slow down. You don't want to stop because that will cause burned grooves. You don't want to go too fast because that will make the wire bend. Continue the cut all the way through the block. Keep going smoothly and slowly and feeling the resistance. If you feel resistance or you can see the wire bending, slow down. And there you go, a perfect cut. Now that I sliced off a four inch piece off the bottom of the block, I'm gonna further slice it into four inch square pieces, which I'll need for the corners of the transition. This is just like with the larger block. We go slowly and smoothly and make sure the wire doesn't bend and we don't feel excess resistance. One thing you don't see is that I'm wearing a respirator. This stuff gives off a nasty smell and it's probably toxic. Do this four times and we have our four blocks for the transition piece. If you need to cut a piece that's taller than the height of the bow, you can also arrange the bow on top. Again, make sure the weight of the bow pushes the wire across the supports, keeping it taut. Now let's take a look at the transition we need to make. I wanted to transition from the 7.5 inch large tube for a 14 inch long cone down to a three inch small tube. The transition isn't solid, it's actually four pieces with ribs in between. The ribs add a lot of strength in this structure like this. It, strength isn't critical for this part, but it's still a good practice to make sure we have some lateral support. First comes the inside cut. 
we need to cut a quarter cylinder out of each quarter of the transition to leave space for the three inch inner tube. To make this more accurate, I've made guides that fit on both ends of the block at one corner. This allows the inner and outer radiuses to be created. These pieces fit on the corner with two blocks to hold them snugly against adjacent faces. And then provides a guide for the inside radius and the outside radius, although I didn't use it in this case. The guides are held onto the block with a bar clamp to keep everything securely together. And then we go back over to the hot wire and run it through, creating the inside curve by running it along both guides. Once the bulk of the material has been removed, you can take a second pass to clean up any irregularities if necessary. And here's the scoop taken out to make room for the inside tube. And finally, how it fits around the inside tube, covering a quarter of the circumference. The ribs help add a lot of strength and also line everything up. I'm using four ribs here, evenly spaced, that will go in between the foam blocks and then the foam blocks fill in the volume in between the ribs. Here the ribs are partially bonded and you can see how the blocks fit in between them. Once the transition ribs are bonded to the tubes, it's time to glue in the foam blocks. I'm using this special foam adhesive, although it looks pretty much like white glue. Whatever you do, be careful not to use CA Crazy Glue and similar products because they will actually eat away the foam. The glue sticks pretty well so the foam will stay in place by itself. Then just let the adhesive cure and we'll trim the outside. So now we have the foam glued to the outside and we're ready to trim it to shape. The traditional thing to do here is to sand it down, which would work. What I'm going to do is take one more pass of hot wire foaming to remove a bunch of excess since sanding produces such a mess. This is a particularly hard cut to wire foam because you are rotating the bow through a curve. In addition, the radius at the large tube is larger than the radius at the small tube, so it's really difficult to get a perfect surface. So I'm not going to try. Instead, I'm going to cut it a little oversize and sand it down to the final surface. And here we go, cutting the first quarter block to shape, or actually slightly oversize. Again, this is a tricky cut because we want to keep this in line with the center of the tube, which means making a smaller radius on the right side than on the left side. And you can see that it's far from perfect, which is why I cut oversize. And here's the last quarter cut. A little bit easier now because everything's exposed, but it's still hard to get a perfect surface. Here we are with the foam roughly cut away. 
We still have work to finish it, but at least we have a lot less foam to sand down. And here's why it's worth the trouble. It's a lot easier to throw away these solid blocks than the dust that comes from sanding. Here's another view showing how much there is extra around the tube, especially on the narrow end. Of course, you can sand by hand, but if you can do it on a lathe, it's easier and more accurate. At first, it's really bumpy as you're taking off the high spots, and eventually you'll get down smooth. Go slow and check your work frequently because coarse sandpaper takes off a lot of foam. You'll know when you're done because the foam will be down to the ribs and the ends will taper down to the tube. You may have some gouges or other soft spots in the foam, especially where it gets thin. Fill these with a good lightweight filler. Now we need to give it a hard surface and we'll do that with two layers of six ounce fiberglass. You may want to check out my tube wrapping video for more details on fiberglassing surfaces. As always, make sure you have everything ready to go before you mix up the epoxy. For these kind of surface applications, I like to apply the fiberglass cloth dry. This means wetting out the surface first, applying the cloth, and then completing the wet out. Because a cone is a simple shape, I can use large pieces of fiberglass. I'm going to use four pieces of six ounce fiberglass overlapping. Once a little more than half the surface is wet out, I apply the first piece. This is going to cover a quarter plus an eighth down either side, covering a total of half. Four pieces like this will give two wraps over the whole area. Once again, you can't see it, but I'm wearing a respirator. Be sure to be careful when working with epoxy and other potentially toxic materials. The fiberglass sticks pretty well because of the epoxy, but you can put a little tape just to make sure it can't shift around. Then rotate the tube a quarter turn and we'll apply the second piece. This is just the same as the first piece except it's overlapping by a quarter. Second piece of cloth applied just like the first, smoothed out and then the wet out completed. Be very careful at the edges. Cut fiberglass cloth can come apart very easily, so you want to get it fully saturated, but not tear out the fibers. Let the epoxy cure to the leather stage, and then we'll cut off the excess. First, cut through the fiberglass to your tape mark all the way around. Then we can peel off the excess, the tape, fiberglass, and tape protecting the tube. Just the same thing with the other end of the transition. And voila! Our transition is structurally complete. And here it is, giving you a close-up of the surface. Six ounce fiberglass is pretty coarse, so it'll take some filling, but we have a good solid structure to finish the rocket. 
Be sure to check out the rocket this transition is part of once it's completed.